Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Edmonton, Alberta. My name is Reverend Mark Chang. Today we're talking about prayer, and in particular, your whining, nagging sort of prayers. Why do we pray about the same thing every Sunday? Is God listening? Does God care? What's really going on when we pray? We're going to be addressing those questions by looking at Exodus 17. It's the story of God providing water in the wilderness. And you'll hear more about that in today's children's message. The sermon today is going to be preached live from the sanctuary. And then after that sermon, we're going to be start launching a second live stream to do our prayers of the people. The prayers of the people are just for those who are going to tune in on Facebook and who might be in the sanctuary. The recording is not going to be saved or available later. We're doing that to preserve a little bit of privacy in those prayers. Uh, if you're not able to join us online, you can send a message about any concerns or thanks that you'd like us to express in prayer. As we begin worship, take a moment now to center yourself. Turn off any distractions, place this video on full screen, give yourself a half hour to be still, open to God's presence. Let's pray. O oh God who hears the prayers of your people, listen to us now. We come to you with so many concerns on our hearts. We're worried about work, about money, about health, about relationships, about the well-being of our souls. We are stressed by the news we hear, exhausted by the pain of this world, overcome with a sense of helplessness and doom. And sometimes the only prayer we can muster is, Oh God, help. Help, Lord. Help your people, help your planet, help your church, help us. In our worship, help us to place all of these worries and fears in your hands. Instead of complaining to each other, may we turn our complaints to you. Instead of carrying the burden alone, may we trust enough to share it with you. May your Holy Spirit speak on our behalf when words fail to express our hearts. As we reach out to you, may we feel your hands lifting us up. wandering through this desert and there's no water out here. I'm dying of thirst. But you know what? Reminds me of a story in the Bible. Everything reminds me of a story in the Bible. This one is a story from Exodus 17 and in it the Israelites are wandering in a desert like this and they had no water. They were so thirsty they got angry and complained to Moses and Moses complained to God. God told Moses to take his staff and touch a rock with it and out of the rock God made water to flow. Yeah, that's it. That's the whole story actually. The Israelites were thirsty, they asked God for water, and God provided water. It's really that simple. They asked, God provided. It makes me wonder why they didn't ask sooner. The Israelites were really thirsty by the time they asked God for help. They were so thirsty they were getting angry. But all they had to do was ask. Sometimes we're the same way. We don't want to ask for help, but then we start to struggle, and we struggle so much we get really angry, but now we're too embarrassed to ask, and we get so upset that we explode. This happened to me when I was in school. I wasn't very good at math, and I was too shy to ask for help. I struggled and struggled, but I didn't want to tell anyone. And then one day, the teacher said that we were going to learn multiplication. And that made my head explode. I burst into tears and had to run down the hallway to the bathroom to cry. It was so embarrassing. But you know what? If I had just asked for help, 
None of that would have happened. God wants to help you. God has placed a lot of people in your life to be helping you. All you need to do is ask. You start by saying, God, I need some help. And then God gives you the courage to ask a friend or an adult and say to them, Hey, I need some help. It's good to be asking God and each other for help. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. God is waiting for you to ask, waiting right now to help you. Jesus taught us a prayer, and it's the one that we say every week. In it, Jesus teaches us to ask God for help. Do you want to say that prayer with me now? Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oh look! I found some water! Oh, thank you God! Let's talk about our whiny prayers. Your complaining, nagging, belly aching prayers. The same ones that you say every Sunday morning, the ones that go, Oh God, I'm late again. Oh, why didn't I start this sooner? Oh, there's so much I didn't do yet. Oh Lord, I'm not going to be uh, done in time. Oh God, oh God, please help me not get a photo radar. Oh God, help. You know, those, those whiny prayers you say every Sunday. Well, maybe not those prayers exactly. Those might be particular to me, but you have your own. Those prayers of, God help me with this, God help me with that, like God is your personal butler. I wonder what it's like for God to get this constant stream of prayers from humanity endlessly complaining about all the same old things. Oh God, help the poor. Oh God, help the sick. Oh God, stop the wars. Oh God, heal the planet. Oh God, save us from the plague. Blah, 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 blah. God's inbox is filled with these sort of prayers. Oh, how annoying that must be. In the past, when I read today's passage from Exodus 17, this is how I felt about it, annoyed. The Israelites had just escaped Egypt. They had crossed the Red Sea on dry land. And when they were hungry, God produced manna and quail. Everything was provided for them. They saw amazing miracles. God clearly demonstrated how much God loved and cared for them. But now, they're thirsty. And they start whining to Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? After all God had done for them, they're still complaining? Now they need water? What's next? They want someone to carry them over to the promised land? Such whiners. That's what I used to think of this story. But this week when I read it, I heard what I was saying to myself as if for the first time. They're complaining about water. Water, the essential liquid of life. They didn't need Perrier. They're just looking for some sort of muddy creek, anything. They were dying of thirst. So yeah, I'd complain about that too. As great as the Red Sea, the manna and quails and all of that was, if they don't have water, none of that would have mattered. This isn't whining. This is essential. I'm very lucky to have never experienced true thirst in my life. But those rare times when I've forgotten to bring a drink on a long car ride have taught me that I would not, it would not take me long before I started cursing God. Of course the Israelites quarreled with Moses. God knew that they would. So what is God playing at? Why let them be thirsty? If God could provide manna and quail, then God could have easily placed a spring of water here and there along the way. Why did God wait till they were dying of thirst before God told Moses that he could just take his staff and touch a rock and water would pour out of it? 
The key part to understanding this story is to remember that the Israelites are not just on a journey across the wilderness. They are on a journey of faith. God is using this wilderness as an opportunity to teach them about faith. And I think the lesson they're learning today is that God will provide. If streams and rivers dotted the wilderness, if the Israelites never thirsted, then they would have taken their water for granted. It would never cross their mind that God provided it. Remember that the Israelites at this point are living before the Torah. They know nothing of God except for what they learned in Egypt. They saw that the gods of the Egyptians were cruel. Those gods didn't care if you lived or died. Those gods demanded that you served them, you feed them, you house them, you give them tribute. Those gods were selfish and fickle and merciless. And the Israelites are asking themselves, will this God of Moses be the same as the God of the Egyptians? They're testing God because they want to know what God is like. And God's using this as an opportunity to test them too, to train them, to teach them that all they need to do is ask and God will provide what they need. This God is not like the other gods. This is a God who listens, a God who cares. And that can be a hard lesson to learn. Those of us who choose to walk with God, we who, we who have felt called out of Egypt, called in a new direction, called in this journey of faith, we struggle with that lesson too. It can be hard to live your life as if you know from the core of your being that God cares and God provides. You will say, oh, God cares about me, but then you'll check your bank account to make sure you've put away enough just in case. You'll say that I know God provides, but when was the last time you thanked God for a glass of water? You will say God loves me, but still feel like you're ugly and worthless. It's hard to accept that God really is watching out for you in this wilderness of life. We doubt that God cares. In our faith journeys, God is always training us so that we grow stronger in our spirituality. And God uses the problems and challenges that we encounter as opportunities for growth. I don't believe that God wanted the Israelites to be thirsty. They were just crossing a desert after all. So God's using that as a moment, this moment of thirst as a chance to reveal more about God's nature. In the same way, God isn't throwing obstacles in your way intentionally or maliciously. Life is a struggle and you're pretty good at finding troubles on your own. But God will use the problems you stumble into to teach you how to reach out, how to ask for help, to show you that God does listen and God does care. Even if your prayers are nothing but complaining, God hears every complaint and cares about them all. It's Moses who was annoyed by the Israelites complaining. God never was. God wanted to hear it. Every week I have the same prayers. Oh God, what am I going to preach about next Sunday? Oh God, I should have started to work on this sooner. Oh God, I'm going to be late again for church. It's a weekly struggle for me, but it's also a weekly reminder, a humbling reminder that I live by the grace and mercy of God. I'm sure you have your weekly complaints and desperate pleas too. For a lot of us right now, it's often about job security. We're praying daily that we'll have a job tomorrow. This pandemic has made a lot of our futures uncertain. And every time you pray about that, God builds in you a little more spiritual muscle. That prayer of help me find work, help me keep working, 
builds in you more gratitude, more trust, more awareness, more sensitivity, more compassion. Or maybe you've been praying about your health. And every time you do, you reflect a little more on this precious gift of life. You wonder at the miracle of our bodies. You grow more compassionate towards the pain of your neighbor, more patient with yourself and grateful for the help of others. You're not whining. You're not being needy. Those prayers of yours are not annoying to God. And even if your prayers are nothing but complaints, God wants to hear you complaining. The act of praying itself helps to change you. Every week in our prayers of the people, we end up praying about the same things. There's often a prayer for natural disasters, there's wars and conflicts. We pray for a lot of health concerns and at St. Andrews, often about mental health and addictions. Because it's almost the same thing every week, you might feel like we're nagging God or whining, but it's not. It is important that we keep turning to God every time we face these issues. That prayer, even if it's an angry complaint, helps to change our perspectives. It's a spiritual exercise that strengthens our souls. It moves us to be more loving. It prompts us to action. It reminds us, ultimately, that God is in control, that God cares and God will provide. The pandemic is not going to end because a handful of Christians from St. Andrews in Edmonton prayed about it one Sunday. But when we pray persistently about it, we find the strength to face this pandemic, to help lighten the load for others. Through our nagging, whining prayers, God slowly changes us, and through us changes the world. The next time you're thirsty, complain to God about it. The next time you're hungry, tell God. You have a little ache in your back, whine about it. Moan towards the heavens at every inconvenience. Let God hear your frustrations. We hold back too much. We think, oh, this is nothing. I don't need to bother the creator of the universe about it. And then we try to do it all on our own. But I'm telling you, God isn't asking you to do this all on your own. God wants you to ask for help, is waiting for you to ask. So whether you're dying of thirst in the desert or suffering from some chapped lips, pray and ask for God's help. It doesn't matter how big or small the problem is, your whiny prayers delight the divine every time. Amen.